Claire Baker, former Clutterholic, founder of ClutterClearing.net here in the glorious sunshine uh, on a Monday afternoon here in Banbury. Uh, spring is definitely giving it a go uh, to, to uh, come through. The shoots are coming up in the garden, frogs are in the pond. It, it's going to give it a good bash, I think. We're having lots of, of, of nice days like this, uh, followed by miserable days, and it definitely does affect the mood, doesn't it? Um, but I'm taking, I'm making the most of the fact that it's it's glorious sunshine at the moment. Get a bit of my uh, vitamin B, vitamin B12, is it you get from the sun? Anyway, I wanted to record a video uh, just to explain why I have been quiet uh, for the last couple of months. I haven't, as you've probably noticed, been recording my uh, weekly vlog about my weight loss uh, clutter clearing journey. So I just wanted to kind of explain why. Uh, I am an emotional eater uh, that is my trigger and the last few months have been very emotional uh, and a bit of a roller coaster I think I alluded to it in some of my my videos at the end of last year um, that, that life was getting a little bit stressful uh, my husband had a diagnosis last summer uh, on his hand that he has something called Dupre's contracture and basically that's where his his fingers uh, are becoming claw-like. Now this wouldn't normally be an issue uh, if you had an office type job but my husband doesn't have an office type job he is a sign maker a traditional sign writer uh, he has been a traditional sign writer for 30 I think we're coming up to 37 38 maybe even 38 years it's the only job that he's ever known and uh, it is a manual job he has to to hold and lift uh, signs and obviously having this issue with his hand massively impacted his ability to work it limited what he was uh, or is able to do uh, this affected us quite significantly because it literally overnight he had to give up uh, quite a lot of, of what he was doing uh, and and impacted on our financial security. I still bring in money, um, but not enough to completely support us. So um, it was a worrying time from the summer when we had to change everything. Now, normally uh, December and January is a quiet time of the year for him anyway. But because of this almost enforced uh, change and shift, it meant that we were quiet with his work from September onwards and by the beginning of December I think the stress and the worry because not having a happy husband is 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 not good either and um, there is a saying happy wife happy life uh, well I think it works the same way in, in the opposite direction happy husband happy life and seeing your husband who has loved his profession for 38 years he became a bit of a shadow of himself um, that feeling at the age of 51 that what he has always known and always enjoyed that he can't do it uh, the same anymore that panic of what am I going to do instead 51 self-employed uh, no pension so what am I going to do um, Thank goodness we don't have children, is <laughs> all I can say. Otherwise he would probably be sent into an even bigger panic. He is a panicker, he's a worrier anyway. He's a worrier when we do have money, he's a worrier when we don't have money. Um, the hunter-gatherer came out in him. So dealing with all of that uh, impacted on me. Uh, wanting to obviously support my husband, not knowing how I could. Trying to think of other ways. Uh, to to make up for the loss of income from from the work that he had to stop doing um, his panic of uh, you know what if I use lose the the use of my hands because he's got it he's got it particularly in one hand and it's slightly in the other um, so yeah so that all sort of started in the September now I don't know about you but I'm the kind of person who uh, when you're in the deep end you keep going you keep try and keep your head above water just keep going um flight or fight and i'm a fight person um but then when 
the time starts to pass and the reality starts to hit you and it becomes a little bit more ongoing, um, that, that's when the stress starts to kind of come out. Now, as you are aware, I do something every week called TRE, which is my um, stress management class. And that's great, that's made a huge difference. I have no doubt that I would not be coping as well with everything if it wasn't for, for that. Um, and the weekly counselling. Um, although the weekly counselling was every other week uh, over the Christmas period because of this effect, uh, impact on our, on our, our, our finances because of my husband's work. And January, uh, December and January are quiet times anyway for him. So of course it was even more quiet because it had actually been quiet since September. Coupled with that, <laughs> what was I thinking with hindsight? Mother-in-law came to stay for 17 days. Uh, at the beginning of December, we decided to have her come and stay with us at the beginning of December rather than having her over Christmas and New Year. So of course she was coming into the midst of this stress, stressful environment anyway. We were trying to shield her from it. We didn't want her to know, uh, you know, just how stressful it was. Um, she's got a cataract uh, and she's on the list for having a cataract, but realistically she's not going to get it done until the, the, until, um, uh, the summer, the beginning of the summer. Um, can't see out of her eye. Obviously worried about her being at home, living independently. Um, she's already had two accidents this, this month uh, where she's walked into cupboards. Uh, she's lost three teeth. She says it's not related. Um, <laughs> so yes, stressful time. So it's not really that surprising that not only did I not lose weight in December and January, uh, but I did put on, I put on 11 pounds. <sighs> because I was less, I don't want to say strict. I was less mindful about eating the right things. Uh, my mother-in-law bought loads of mince pies. Apparently there's only one particular type of mince pie that we like. Uh, no, but there's one particular mince pie she likes. And um, she did keep uh, trying to persuade me to eat them. I was good for the first week, but I think my, my resolve just wasn't there in the second week. And I did eat mince pies and I did eat the things and I, I was eating them knowing that it wasn't gonna make me feel better and then it was gonna make me feel worse, but with everything else. And so again, those habits, you don't realize how deep these habits, deeply rooted these habits are until they are tested. Um, and I think it was kind of just a bit of a, a perfect storm. Uh, and my husband and I didn't go to the gym as regularly either in December, we did go, but just not as regularly, routinely. Uh, because of other things that were, were going on and were taking up our time. Um, so yes, um, plus, just to make life really interesting, I was going through a phase of um, change, realisations with clutter clearing, with, with who I help uh, and how I help. I have noticed over the last year that there is a significantly higher proportion of borderline hoarders and hoarders who are asking for help. In the past, it used to be easy to distinguish hoarders from clutterholics because hoarders wouldn't ask for help. They wouldn't self-fund their help. But over the last year, I have come into contact and worked with more borderline hoarders and hoarders. And there was a growing frustration in me that hoarders need help in their home, they need home visits, and working with them for 90 days, for three months, is not gonna make enough of a difference. It takes three weeks to break a habit, six weeks to create a habit, 36 weeks to ingrain that habit, make, make it automatic. So realistically, I need to be working with my clients for a year. They need to commit to clearing their clutter for a year. They're gonna have good weeks, bad weeks, they're gonna make mistakes, they're gonna, they're gonna um, uh, have to learn by their mistakes. We all do, just like I am with my weight, my weight journey. Trying to help a clutterholic on the path to a clutter-free home and life in 90 days is 
less likely. So of course I was feeling, feeling like a failure, which I'm not because so many of my clients, you know, are on the right road. They are on the right track. They are um, continuing their journey with help. They have 90 days, then they realize, yes, this has made a difference. So I'm going to carry on getting Claire's help because I realize Claire's help is making the difference. So they do continue after the 90 days, but more and more weren't. They, they were getting to the end of the 90 days and either not seeing enough of a difference that they thought I hadn't helped or um, thinking that they could continue on their own when I know that they probably won't continue on their own. Um, because I know the things that make the difference. Um, and accountability is a big part of that. And wanting to work with hoarders in their home. Um, so, yeah, so a lot of frustration um, for me, but conflict because of thinking, well, I can't rock the boat with the clutter clearing and change things because, um, you know, because my husband's in a period of change uh, and instability. So, yeah, so there, it's not surprising really that I was, I was um, less strict with my eating, um, which meant that the emotional e eating could increase. Now I'm really pleased that it's only 11 pounds that I put on. It could have been far worse. Um, that's not even a pound a week, if you think. No, that's more, more than a pound a week over, that's a pound, what, pound and a, a pound and a half a week that I gained um, over a two month period. Um, so yeah, so I suppose I was just at a point where, because I was so low, um, frustrated, couldn't at the time see a way out. It's been a couple of months where it's been get your head down, just just get this sorted. I am a problem solver, always have been. Uh, clients get frustrated because I will always see a positive to a negative. I was struggling to see the positive in my negative. Um, that's why the counselling uh, that I have uh, is, is very important. Um, and I suppose in a way that almost doesn't help because me knowing that my, my weekly counselling and my weekly accountability makes a difference and when I don't have it, look what happens. I know that's the same for my clients. When they have, it's not until they don't have the weekly accountability and the weekly support from me that they realise actually it does make a difference. Um, so yeah, I feel, I, I feel like getting back on track I feel like, I don't feel like we're out of the woods yet, but I feel like I've turned a corner. Oh yes, and actually there was another major thing that happened, oh, like there isn't enough going on already. Um, in December there was a family issue that was going on. Now it didn't affect me directly, um, but there was something that happened and it, it reminded me that there is no possibility of repairing my relationship with my parents. And although I knew that in my head, logic and reason, this thing that happened over Christmas, it, it, I knew it in my heart. I know it in my heart now um, that there is no possibility of, of, of change. Um, I realise now that, that there's never going to be an acknowledgement. And so I've been coming to terms with, with that. And... When I saw Marissa, my counsellor last week, she actually, I actually said to her, I feel as though I am grieving. I am grieving for what could have been, what I wish was, and I'm grieving for the relationship with my father. I've never been close to my mother emotionally. Um, I thought there was hope 
for me and my father and this thing that happened made me realize that hope is gone and it's a weird thing to be grieving for someone who is is actually still alive but where you finally accept that there is no hope so yeah so that's been tough that's been taking up a lot of mental energy and time um so yes hardly surprising i think now i think about it emotional alita hmm yeah have we had a bit of an emotional roller coaster couple of months mm -hmm. <laughs> both personal professional financial if i think about my wheel of life every segment pretty much has been affected over the last couple of months um uh, health and well-being haven't been going to the, to the gym as much um friends and family haven't haven't seen friends as much because my husband and i have kind of been having to hanker down financial segment that's been affected career segment that's been affected um physical environment uh is that been a, that hasn't been affected <laughs> uh thankfully that hasn't become cluttered that's good um so again most of my eight segments of my wheel of life have been unsettled shall we say over the last couple of months um so i need to be kind to myself i need to be compassionate with myself i need to say it's okay claire it's uh, yes i've put on 11 pounds um but it's it, that's gonna come off uh now that i have my motivation is starting to come back it's not here 100 percent yet but it's coming back um i need to be kind and compassionate to myself um, and I need to grieve and and let go, which is hard, and allow myself the time and the space that is needed. Because only then will I be in a place where I can take those strides forward that I need to in all segments of my Wheel of Life. Does that make sense? I realise if you haven't watched the Wheel of Life, uh, video then what I've just said probably won't make a lot of sense but anyway I said this was going to be a short video to explain it's not really been a short video was it one day I will do a short video anyway so that's me just trying to explain why uh, I haven't recorded my weekly vlog um, because because yeah I've been I've been overwhelmed I've been overwhelmed by life um, and but I am getting back on track uh, it's not going to derail me I'm still facing the right direction uh, just stalled just stalled for a little bit uh, and I make a commitment that in February uh, I will start recording my videos again and sharing the journey with you All right. so, thank you for watching thank you for listening do share with me uh, any of your uh, uh, progress over the last couple of months because that does really help uh, knowing that I'm not alone if you have struggled over the last couple of months but also knowing that if, if you have uh, you know made uh, strides uh, and, and successes really does help me I I had underestimated I think until now that working with my clients every week really does help me as much as it hopefully helps them because Noticing the, the significance of what they are doing um, and the steps that they are taking in the right direction. They're practicing everything uh, that, that, that I preach. I am trying to practice uh, what I preach. I am having those tough days and weeks that, that, that my clients have. Um, we're, we're in it together um, and we will get there. All right, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Sun's gone anyway. It must be time for a cup of tea. All right, uh, I, I shall take care. Uh, you take care uh, and I shall see you in my uh, first weekly vlog of 2018 next week.